and Teresa's over here putting stuff in the refrigerator and she wants to blame me for it. All right. This is right. cleaning up the kitchen tub. All right, let's see. There she is. You go. There. Hey, you're live, by the way. And David, we're still trying to clean up the kitchen. It's not even. Oh. Why don't we have our live stream? Huh? It's time. It's way time. So, uh, took lots of convergence photos. I have to learn how to image stack. That's the next critical thing to do. Uh, hey, Joy. <laughs> Joy Adams. Yeah. Ow. I ran my thumb across a concrete parking lot today and took a big plug out of it. So it hurts. Yeah, so we're in the house. I don't know how good this little stream will work because I'm on the Wi-Fi. So Teresa's trying to like do stuff. Look. Too many puts this down here. My plastic bowls. Is this plastic? This is glass. That's what I'm dealing with. I have to run a power cord to my phone just so it'll work. I mean, it was like so dead. <laughs> but yeah, I used my brand new lens that literally came in today. My new 500 millimeter phase Fresnel F5.6. To give you an idea how big this lens is, this is the 70 to 200 F2.8. It's almost the same size. And it, but I'll tell you the truth, it's lighter than the 7200, significantly. Feels like it is. I literally got it out of the box, put the F to Z on it, stuck it on the Z6, and immediately mounted it up and started manually focusing in Jupiter with it. Um, I was kind of impressed because when we zoomed in to check focus, I could actually see the moons of Jupiter in the picture. It looks like a line of dots going across Jupiter. I think I saw four of them in the picture. One was way down off by itself and three of them was right around the planet. And then of course you, you can see Saturn, but I don't know if I'm gonna get the rings to come through. I don't know if I had enough magnification because I didn't run the teleconverter. I just ran the 500 mil, which it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can leave it. It'll be okay. <laughs> Teresa's giving me grief because I'm not helping her clean up the kitchen, which she was going to normally, like, task me with doing, I guess. What? <laughs> what? Ah, this thing's got a removable foot. There it goes. Yeah, let's see. Without the foot, yeah, they're almost the same size. I was kind of impressed. Man, if you get the if you get it just right, right there, you can see the you can see the Fresnel element. If I get the angle just right, yeah. But it's an, it's it's shockingly light. I don't know if it's got um, fluorite elements in it, but man, it's it's a lot lighter. I'll be honest with you, it is. It's lighter than this seventy two hundred. That's kind of surprising to me. I wasn't expecting that. But I got some projects coming up over the next few months, and I really wanted a good, sharp 500 millimeter, and this thing excels way past my 200 to 500, which is a great lens, but this one is actually better, like pretty significantly. The next one above this is the one like Phil's got, that 500 millimeter F4 is is better than this one but this one is a nice go between between those two lenses so i'll be honest with you i'm curious to um i'm curious to play with it see what these buttons do i gotta learn all about all this I'm not real sure it's just got focus yeah but i wanted to juice the let's see here okay let me run, it's right around the corner, I'll grab it.
Phil said grab the two to 500 F5.6 and show it for size comparison. Let me get the, the shoe out of the way. Now, that's at 200 mil. What have I got down here? Oh, I've got the stupid 200 mil lock. What have I done? No, it ain't locked, it's just stuck. Uh-oh. There it goes. Okay. I don't know. I think I might have jacked my lock. <laughs> there it is at 500, and then there's that. I think they have the same front element. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a tiny little thing compared to it. And it's it's a lot lighter than this one. Pretty significantly. Kind of worries me now about that latch. And it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I thought I broke my lock. I had the lens locked and I didn't realize it. Ooh. It's kind of grady now. I don't think it's hurting anything to stay true. Yeah. I just use it. This is a pretty nice lens. Let's see. Okay. So you don't do a lot of wildlife. What is your plan for the face present? I'm gonna start doing more wildlife. And uh, I've got, got some projects coming up in the next couple of months that I ain't gonna really get into just yet, but I want the 500 millimeters and I wanted the lighter weight lens, but I also wanted the better image quality than this one. <clears throat> and this thing supposedly brings it to the table, so I'm gonna play with it. But yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, some, do some wildlife. Hey, Phil says, okay, let's go. Yeah, I'm on a, I've got a uh, workshop that we're slated to do, I think in April. Plus I've got some stuff coming up in February and I seen a barred owl in the trees literally this evening here. Beautiful owl, of course, completely by happen chance. It just kind of, flew into the trees beside us, sat there on the limb a few minutes and then flew off to another one. Gorgeous owl. Just completely by chance. But yeah, I'm gonna mess around with some of that. Get this thing off my neck, it's hot. But, but even on the um, Z6 with the F to Z, it worked really well. It seemed to focus fast and sure. I don't know what's meant my focus on it. Does it say eight meters to infinity or full? I don't know what minimum focus distance is. Oh, dude, it's got AF on on the buttons. Sweet. It makes a sound. Okay, there's stuff going on here I don't understand. There's a bunch of switches on this thing I ain't fully aware of. One's, one's a music note, not music note, whatever that is. <clears throat> I was gonna get the D810 and try to get up there. I think it has a better, better minimum focus than the 500 F4, but I'm not sure if it's better than the two to 500. I mean, well, let's just look. It should show it in the window here. Yeah, this is about seven feet, it looks like. Maybe six feet. Six or seven feet's minimum on the two to 500. I didn't think about looking in the window. 
Yeah. It's about the same. Looks like it's about maybe eight feet, something like that. My camera's in the bedroom. And I'm back. Let's see here. Battery's dead, too. I did take a spare, though. Okay. Let's, let's put this rig together. Let's see what we got. Five hundred milliliters. Oh yeah, dude, that was quick. Oh, it's, that's what's wrong. It's not wrong, I've got it on the um, wide area. I'll move it to pinpoint focus. That way I can, yeah, let's see. Even on a glossy surface, it focused fast. Let's see here. Oh, it's a little bit one inch one second exposure a little bright <clears throat> okay yeah it's pretty quick Yeah, and quiet, shockingly quiet. Okay, let's see if it works like this. This is pretty cool. These buttons are programmable with this switch. And I've selected it to AF on. And so now, when you're holding the lens, your finger rests on them buttons. You just mash this button and it focuses. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But let's see. Oh, I've hit focus magnification. Let's back it up. Yeah, I was looking to see it. It's about eight feet minimum focus on the Z6. Let's see. All right. About 12 feet. Wow. Really? There's music? It ain't doing anything. I don't know what that does. You, said, you say it wants, that you want to turn off the music notes, but it ain't making any sounds. Is that like focus confirmation? Is that what that is? <clears throat> Let's see. It comes, of course, in one of these now. That shows you how new it is. Oh, it does have the mechanical locking lens in it. All right, let's see. Yeah, there you go. There's the handy fancy lens hood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming it has to do with the um, focus confirmation beat if you have it enabled. It's not making any sound. Let's see if it runs quieter. 
Sounds the same. Yeah. I agree. I think we'll leave it off. But I, I just realized I took all them pictures tonight with the VR on on the tripod. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be usable. We'll find out. I downloaded them all. It took me a while to download them because there was a bunch of them. The case. Let's see here. Shut this off. It looks like the two to five hundred case. It's just the ballistic nylon with the zipper deal on it. Let's see. It's got a big disc. A hard panel velcroed into the bottom for some reason. It's just cushion, and then they've got this dense foam pad with a layer of felt on one side for the lens to sit against. Yeah, it's just the standard little case. It's got a place for a ID tag or something on it. It's got the shoulder strap, but I never put them on. Normally, I don't use these. I put it in a like a, a think tank case or something. <clears throat> Really? I think it looks the same. Maybe it don't. I'm just gonna see here. If I can get it all in here easily. Mm. Where's my F mount cap? There it is right there, okay. Y'all didn't see that. <sighs> okay. There you go. <laughs> it's in the case. Put that on the table. What's it say? It says, the two to 500 came with a big cloth sock. Maybe it did. I got another one of them cases. Maybe my 70 to 200 come in one. It's a little smaller version of it. All right, then we're gonna mount this up. Okay, it's unlocked. Yeah, I, I, I jacked that lock. It's scuffing around now. Come on. Okay. Oh, wow, yeah. Minimum focus on, on the two to 500 is about three or four feet closer. It's a good bit closer. I mean, you're you're not really taking pictures of stuff six feet away with this anyway, but but yeah, it does. It focuses pretty good bit closer actually. Hmm. That's kind of but worrisome. It works. I messed that lock up. Didn't realize it was stuck. I actually thought something else was going on. Really interesting. Because you can get close. Phil says that that's, why, that's what makes the two to 500 a great butterfly lens is because you can get close. Uh, yeah. It's heavy compared to that other one. A lot heavier. There we go. But I still like this little 24 to 70 F4 to come with it. That's a great little lens. I actually took, I took a bunch of photos. I took series with the 500 millimeter trying to get the, basically the two planets and the little moons. So I'm gonna see if I can, um, 
Let it stack them to where I can get, clean them up where you can seal better. And that's kind of the idea. <clears throat> but then I got done with that and I had been chatting with Aaron a little bit about it. And he said, go a little wider and get a seam and get it in a seam. So I put the 70, the 2470 on, dialed it out to 70 and then went vertical orientation, portrait orientation, took me a picture. Yeah, I could see them. I could see them on the display on the camera. Let's see. Um, let me just crack this bad boy open here. See, I did, I did that. Y'all can kind of tell it. And that bright star in the top half of the sky is them. But this is at 70 millimeters. You can still see it's two distinct entities there. Man. But let's see, let's go back and get back away from these. All right. I don't know if it'll show you or not, but you can see. Yeah, y'all can see them. You can see the moons of Jupiter right through there and that Saturn right there. Yeah, you can see them. And there's another one down here. It's dim, but it's right down here just out of frame. Yeah, there was, and then these are at, let's see. Uh, I thought I was gonna get the information to come up. I don't remember which button does it. That's one tenth of a second at F11 and ISO 4000. Uh, that's what they look like under normal they're just in, in two little specks and then as you zoom in you can see the, the moons pop out of the sky yeah there we go now you can see it but yeah i was kind of shocked to see them yeah and once i once i do my stack um, I'm curious to see how they turn out. Let's see, let me back this off. Um, I'm gonna go up here, because at the beginning of the night, I took a bunch of pictures like that. There we go. To start with, I was getting moon photos just to experiment, which it looks overexposed on that, but it's not. I mean, let's see. There you go. Yeah, you, and there's lots of detail in here. All right. I don't know if y'all can tell it or not, but yeah, it was pretty. It was. Um, it's just a half moon tonight, but it looked really good. <clears throat> I mean, you know, that's what I'm seeing on the screen. So it's. I need, you know, you need a thousand millimeters. You need a telescope if you want to do that properly. That's, that's you can do with what you have, right? But yeah, it's been a, it's been a really interesting um, evening. The whole day's been off the chain. I'll just tell you. We woke up this morning in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, then drove back and then immediately started doing stuff for the machine shop. And then I went and helped Sierra move furniture. And I took my truck to the tire store and it's got, it's down there waiting on me to come get it. And tomorrow's gonna be just as busy as today was. <laughs> it's just been crazy. I tell you, it's been so crazy. I haven't, I've got a big smudge on my glasses, like right here. And I haven't had time to wipe them off yet. <laughs> so what have you guys been doing? Mm. Is the bandwidth okay? You cannot see the detail in the cell phone photo that I put. Oh, you're still at work. Wow. Sorry to hear that. You cannot see the detail in the cell phone photo that I put on the Georgia Photog Facebook group. <laughs> 
Heather's chilling. Phil's working. <laughs> ah, good, good. <clears throat> good, good. I'm glad to hear that. But yeah, tonight's been a really interesting night. I mean, literally, the box, look, look here. <laughs> I, I ripped it out of the box and went and got in the truck, the shop truck, because mine's in the, in, getting tires put on it, and drove up to my sister's place at the top of the hill. <laughs> I haven't even put the box away yet. Oh yeah, there's the shoulder strap. <laughs> <laughs> you have access to Phil's F4. What are you jelly for? <laughs> that thing's that thing blows this one away. I was just surprised that it's almost the same size as the seventy to two hundred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> F4 is a heavy creature, isn't it? It's a big lens. That's a whole bunch of glass. <clears throat> so the 300 millimeter will be smaller than this. Hey, Don, thank you for stopping in. Appreciate you coming by. 11 pounds? Oh, I don't even know what this thing was. It's got a book. Surely it's got a book. Yeah. Product literature. Look, I didn't think about that at all. Let's see. No one ever gets this out. <laughs> Vibration reduction, focus distance, dimensions, weight. Three pounds, three and a half ounces. Oh, what, what Don says, I have the Nikon Z5 24 to 200 F4 and works great. That's an awesome lens. I mean, if I was going to shoot video, I think, you know, a lot of video, like if I was trying to do um maybe story blocks video clips i think i definitely have that lens because you just need the one lens and you get good footage that is one heavy stop of light <laughs> low light christmas lights were great nice <laughs> greg scas good evening i end up getting the 70 to 200 f28 did you get the vintage look like me? But the, mine don't, mine has the red VR. Nice and old. This is the Gen 1. Uh, did, if you got the new one, the FL, you got the, the Primo one. Greg, Greg uh, got himself a D850 recently. Want one for my Z6. That 70 to 200 FL. That fluorite one? Is that the one you're talking about, Phil? Hey, Teresa, Greg's on. Hi, Greg. Teresa's over there in the living room. <laughs> Normally, see, the living room's dim enough that you can't see this cluttered up coat tree. <laughs> And this couch with all of my junk from where I was up there taking photos. Well, I'll tell you, um, I think Heather has the Tamron 18 to 400, and she loves it. She's in the she's in here tonight. It's a great lens. I've seen her to use it to great effect. It's a great piece of kit. I think you would you would do well with it. Oh, you want the 24 to 200, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. For if you was just gonna have, yeah, but so it's still a great lens. I mean, won't the Z5 automatically switch to DX mode if you put that lens on it? I think you will. I'm pretty sure it'll automatically switch over. Cause better for the Z50. Yeah. Well, I'm getting text messages. It is new. There's Bass Angler. How you doing? 
I finally did crank it back up once the phone charged enough to where it would come on. <laughs> I haven't had my car charger with me all afternoon and I've been running the GPS app and stuff and it had sapped my phone. So when I got up there to um, start my uh, convergence photos, I thought, I'll stream it. I got it out and noticed when I started the stream that it was already in the red. And I thought, we'll just see how long it'll hold up. And it made it about seven or eight minutes. <laughs> it says 39 on, on the backside for some reason. So I wonder, I wonder if before it terminated the stream, it ran a long time with nothing feeding it. So I don't know. I mean, I watched it and it only went, or I scrubbed up to the end of what it has playable and it's only until the stream was cut, but it shows 39 minutes on the, on the stream length, which was kind of strange. But yeah, the phone's plugged into power right now. So man, I got a cord hooked to it so I can juice this up while I talk. All right, I'm gonna show Bass Angler. He's just got in the, in the, the room. This, this is what a 500 millimeter phase Fresno looks like. This is what a 70 to 200 F2.8 looks like. 500 millimeters, 200 millimeters. It's almost the same size and it's lighter. This lens weighs a fraction of what this thing does. It's nice. You know, Phil got me to compare it to the, uh, this is racked out the 500, same, same focal length, same f-stop, you know, <laughs> it's just, yeah, this 200 to 500, it's a, it's a big, a big lens, but it takes really good photos, but this one supposedly takes better photos and it's shorter, lighter, significantly smaller. So I'm curious to get it out. Uh, maybe over the holidays, just might try to do some of that with it. That's kind of a, an idea. I've kind of come to a, a, a realization. <clears throat> I'll, I'll bring y'all up to speed. I was doing some uh, reviews. I was going through my 2020 photos and just trying to find some that I would really want to print. And I don't know, you can't tell, but I don't know how long it'll hold up, but let's see. We're gonna, we're gonna be brave and go for it. I'll unplug the juice. I printed that sunrise photo and, and framed it, and then I printed the, oh wow, you can't even tell because of all the lights. If I get the angle right, you can see. Then I did the Pier 14 over in Myrtle Beach, and I was getting a few more out that I wanted to print. And so as I was going through them, I got to noticing basically the trend of the photos that I like to take. We'll put this back on some wall power. And of those photos I like to take, I noticed I was drifting towards landscapes. That's basically what that one is and the one that's over there. <laughs> Getting those angles for the camera right is hard to do. But I noticed the, the, I do like street photography, but I don't like the close proximity street photography, if that makes sense. Um, what I like is capture a scene or architectural, but I really like slow shutter speed. So I end up wanting to go at night and do long exposures, get light trails, get motion blur, or stop the lens way down, or even put an ND filter on in the daytime and do, where I can do pan and blurs and <laughs> we got a bird feeder right over there. It's out of seed. And I thought we had a bag and we can't find it. <laughs> I, didn't we order bird feed? Mm -hmm. I, no, I found bird feed. I just said Tiffany is the 
I thought we ordered it off of Amazon. Well, I don't think we bought it. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. We don't have a no bird seed. We got to get some, but. Walmart run. <laughs> but wait till you see. I set up my camera. Oh, you don't hear the cuckoo clock. The cuckoo clock's electric. What you hear is this parlor clock right here. It's a mechanical clock. That's the one you hear ticking. The This clock right here, I let run down because it runs, um, it's a very inexpensive clock. <laughs> A little bird, actually cuckoos. <laughs> but, but this one is, um, it's a, like a budget clock. This one's got a German movement. This one is a, a, I don't know if it's Anzonia or who, but it wants to, when you wind it up, it, this one's an eight day clock where this one's a 30 day clock. And the eight day clocks, when they're in real good shape, and this one's got, you know, a hundred years worth of run on it, because that's like a 1918 version. There's wear on the parts, so what it does, it wants to run fast at the beginning of the week and then slow at the end of the week. And by the end of the week, it's pretty well caught up. It's back, you know, you'll start in time at the beginning of the week, then it'll run fast for about the first four and a half days, and then it'll start slowing down, and by the time it's time to wind it, it's back on time. And it just, it's just annoying, because it'll start striking on time with that one, and then by three or four days in, it's, it's striking five minutes ahead of it. You know, it'll be five minutes fast by the middle of the week. And then it'll start slowing down and it'll get, and it'll get back in time by the end of the week. It took me forever to dial it in. Oh, <laughs> I got sidetracked. Phil's bringing me back on, on subject. He says you was talking about the kinds of street photography you like to do. Yeah, that was, that's what I started noticing looking through the photos is I didn't, that's why I think I tend to like the 85 millimeter basic focal length, you know, cause I'll shoot them little crop cameras and I'll run 50 to 55 millimeter lenses on them. And that pushes you away a little bit from your subject. Yeah, Don even says he likes to use a longer lens on the street. And I went with some guys who are, um, they have a, a Instagram group. It's called Chattanooga Street or Chat Street or something like that. They've, they've made a group and they've added me to it because they seen I was doing street and I'm posting a lot with Chattanooga as the location. And uh, I went with them and great guys, uh, really cool photographers. And they're very good at street photography, especially the um, getting like expressions and hand gestures from people and things like that. Those guys are masters of it. And I, you know, I kind of, I get where they, I get where they're going. That's, that's their jam. And it's, it's just not mine. I want to back up and get the people in the scene, not just the people like really, they're almost doing street portraits. And it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's not a problem. It's just that that's not what I enjoy doing. I want to, I want to have context and then have the people doing something in that, in that scene instead of just a picture of a guy pointing, you know. To me, that's not as interesting as, the, you know, catching two people interacting on the street or something like that. You know, like when we were doing the photos, I backed up. They were doing detail shots. They had gotten a couple of guys that were interested in doing portraits on the street, and they were doing photos of them and getting them to depose and things. And so I backed up and took their picture of them taking pictures of the people. To me, that was interesting. And, you know, it was just kind of, I started seeing that pattern over the year. And I liked, I liked it a lot when me and Aaron went on our Fellowship of the Aperture Ring adventure video to come. And like when I did my little Urbex thing, when we went to Myrtle Beach and I did the night early morning photo walk and the night photos, you know, I started seeing the pattern 
of what about street photography I really liked. Phil says, I, I was just thinking today about how I prefer longer glass for street. Bass Angler says, I give people hand gestures quite often. Not that hand gesture. <laughs> Which, it gets for grafting street pretty regular. <laughs> but, I mean, Chattanooga is such a small city that, and for whatever reason, well, this year because of the Rona, you don't have a lot of people on the street, sidewalks and stuff, so it's kind of sparse. And, you know, even Tech Assist jokes pretty regular about how my city looks like it's abandoned. When I'm out doing street photography, it's like you, you find two people in 30 minutes to take pictures of. And, you know, and there's days when it's like that. You, know, you, you just don't see anyone other than the locals that are always out in those areas that are hanging out, you know, and you just don't have anything fresh to take pictures of. So you start looking at other things like architecture and lights and shadows and stuff. And that's when I start, started looking hard at motion blur and light trails or long exposures because long exposure starts giving you, it's kind of altered sense of reality sort of look. And that's where that, that's where that kind of came from, I guess. Let's see. Don says the 18 to 400 is more to his taste. Yeah, I mean, the 24 to 70 is a great lens for street. It, it works really well, because if you want to go wide, you back it off to 24 millimeters, and you can get right up on somebody at 24 millimeters. And then if you want to do portraiture, just rack it out to 70. You can do a decent portrait at 70 millimeters. So it, it gives you the best of pretty much both worlds. And right after I got the Z6, I went with my nephew, Jeremy, and we went on like a little night walk. And I was doing, I'm thinking if I'm about to mess up. No, I think it was with the Z6. I did it with the X-T3 as well. But I was doing like 24 millimeter wide angle photos was from down real low, I'd get right down at the ground shooting up and I'd let people walk through the frame. Back. What's back mean? <laughs> Is there, am I missing something? <laughs> oh, you're back. Oh, how you doing, Hassan? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you for coming back, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm back in the house now and I've got the phone plugged into some juice so I can actually get online, stream a little bit. I was, I was so excited to get some photos. <laughs> but yeah, I've kind of figured out that I really like nature and I really like landscape. I really do enjoy getting beautiful vistas. Like the picture I posted on Instagram, was it yesterday or day before of the Smoky Mountains? I love that photo. I've got a project in mind that I want, I want to do soon. I really want to do it soon before someone decides to um, tear them down and clean up the area. I want to go get some photos of some stuff that's kind of iconic and I don't think there'll be enough to do a book, but it'll be a project of its own. I may do them all into a collage. I don't know. We'll figure something out with it, but I'm gonna, I got, I got some cool ideas I wanna execute in the not too distant future. But yeah, I'm gonna start doing some wildlife and this will let me to get that wildlife going. Let me put this back on before I lose it. There, that was easy. Actually, pretty sure. Man, that's small. I like that. <laughs> I can only imagine how small that 300 is. If that's the five, it's got to be just tiny. <clears throat> I've seen where people are starting to... Hassan says he's loving the Sigma 45 millimeter f2.8. That's a good focal length for street. Mm 
you know, you're starting to see the reviews of like the Z6 and Z7 Mark II. Feels this street is fun. Um, I seen Ricky Talks gives it rave reviews and somebody else, somebody sent me a link to somebody that was talking about it. I think it's Steve Perry said that um, the one he was using, I don't remember which version he had, but he said it looked promising. So they may actually have the the kind of uh, focus updates that it needed from the beginning. Mike says, um, I never sent you the star. Oh, the Milky Way photo. Yeah. I literally just found it the other day because I haven't printed it at all. And I was running into trouble because I was trying to upload that to my Google Photos account and Google Photos kept throttling the image back to about half resolution for some reason. I don't know what the deal was with it. But it's like, you know, it's full res coming out of camera. It's 4,000 by 6,000. And when I would upload it to Google Photos, it would down res it to like 3,000 by 1,800 or 2,000 or whatever. So I was trying to figure that out. And then you sent me some stuff to check, and I checked that make, and made sure I didn't have some kind of setting set, and I couldn't find anything. So then I was going to go to Dropbox, and I never did it. I just forgot. So, yeah, we'll get that going because I'm interested to see. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Three hundred millimeter face frozen is like the twenty-four to seventy at its smallest size. Wow, it's a tiny thing. Hassan says he's planning on picking up the sixty-five millimeter f two when it drops. Sigma will be making lenses for the Nikon, and yeah, I heard that that Sigma is actually going to make native glass that auto focuses on Nikon cameras on the Z cameras at least. Yeah. Or Sigma for the Z system. That is great news. Yeah, it is. Because, you know, if they finally crack the Nikon software code to where they can do that, that'll be awesome. <laughs> Everybody's cat's doing something like our cat's outside. We had to throw her out. She kept trying to hide under the bed. <laughs> or she in there asleep? No, yeah. She was in there with Teresa asleep. All right, yeah, I found the image. Like I said, and I moved it. I've got a folder I've set aside for images I want to print. And I put it in that folder so I wouldn't forget it this time. Because like I said, I was going back through my 2020 photos, just kind of just scrolling through the, the months, going through videos. Most of my images end up in video folders where I built videos with them. So I have to go through all those video files and go into the stills and look at the stills to see. Tamron needs to support Fuji. <laughs> Fuji's got a pretty strong lineup of glass now. I think it's pretty good. But I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with my XT3. I haven't been using it. I have I picked it up the other day and turned it on and then set it back down. Phil says you like my sprint work cool i saw that image he printed of the glass the wine glass for heather it, it looked really good oh look look at, there she is <laughs> okay she has a pillow she sleeps on she's a little prima donna <laughs> ah really Shoot me an email, Don. We'll talk. <laughs> Let's see. I missed picking up a lock of tea on eBay for $300. That has so much sad. <laughs> oh. the, the tea, I don't remember much about them. Phil said cat, and Heather said kitty. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah, she's getting settled in. Let's see. Check out Send This File. It is a free app that allows you to send large files for your charts. Okay. 
I'll look at it. I mean, Dropbox, I believe, will allow me to do it. I've got, and my Dropbox is empty. Because what I did was I cleared it, I dumped it so that I could do the the stream picks deal. And then I'd put them in there and Aaron would pull them out. And that, because that's how I could get them up to him up in Indiana. So, and then when we were done with the stream, I'd delete them images, kind of like Phil does, where he just pulls them in straight into Lightroom and then deletes the project. I would, I would just take the whole folder and dump it. And then, you know, I, I created a folder, shared it with Aaron, went in that folder, and then I'd do subfolder with the images and I could just delete the subfolder. So it was real simple. That way I didn't have to reshare it every week. But, so I've got a, a Dropbox that's basically empty. So I could dump it in there. I just haven't done it. it I forgot. You know, I got life got in the way, and um, but I'll do it tonight. I'll upload it to Dropbox tonight and see what it looks like. And if that don't work, I'll use I'll I'll try to use the send this file app and see how that works. Want the uh, Phil says he wants the 150 to 600 Tamron. That's what Aaron uses. Um, on on his that's if uh when you see our um fellowship of the aperture ring video coming soon <laughs> i'm not sure exactly when it drops it's happening within the next few weeks though but that um he that's the lens he uses and he took some amazing elk photos with that 150 to 300 tamron 150 to 600 tamron on his d850 he pretty much runs exclusively Tamron glass on his cameras. He's got all of the, he's got the Holy Trinity of Tamron plus that 150 to 600. It's, and he takes stellar photos with that setup. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, that glass at all. I, man, Cat Kitty. Bass Angler said, Steve Mathis's Steve Mathis said he thought the Z7 II was ready for birds in flight. That's a that's saying a lot because that's been the big um, hiccup of the Z cameras is the autofocus tracking speed is always questionable. Hassan says the Leica the Leica T is the most beautiful camera Leica has ever made in his opinion. Now you got me interested. I'm going to have to go look at it. He says, it's industrial simplicity. Oh, that sounds like me made over. <laughs> Phil says, I probably should not send you a text message while you are streaming from your phone. <laughs> yeah, you, you see me close it or kick it out. You ain't the only person that's texting me, so don't worry. <laughs> it didn't kill the stream this time. That's what that's what Teresa did that killed the stream last time. <laughs> Mike Mitchum says he has the Tamron 15 to 600 G2, probably the 150 to 600 G2, and it doesn't work well with the XT4 and adapter. Maybe it's the 15 to 600. Man, that's a wide focal range. Huh. I've never seen that lens. Joy also has the 150 to 600, and we know what her bird images look like. Truth. <laughs> Phil interrupting the live stream. <laughs> oh, okay, Mike said he meant the 150 to 600. Tamron built some ex some extreme stuff. I wasn't I wasn't gonna be surprised if there was a, a 15 to 600. I mean, what is that one that Heather's using? It's a it's a 18 to 400. Phil says, I want Tamron to make that, what was, what does it say? That lens native for the X-T3. Oh, I see what you're saying. 18 to 400 is what Don John said, is, is a great lens. Yeah. Bass Angler says, six, Sigma makes a 60 to 400. Wow. Which I had the, I bought the Sigma 100 to 500, I believe it was. And I could never get sharp images out of it. I, I, I bought it 
at the time we were going to Hawaii every year in February, we'd always go over there and it's, it's kind of an in-between period. You can actually go to Hawaii. I got to, I got to preface that. You used to could go to Hawaii pretty cheap in February. We would rent a little apartment and we could stay three weeks for the price of like three or four nights in Waikiki in a resort. And we'd live on the North Shore for two, three weeks. I think the longest we stayed was four weeks and four weeks seemed a little long. We were getting kind of homesick on four weeks, but three weeks was about right. And seriously, you could live in a little apartment for like three or four weeks for like two or three grand. It was very cheap. When you, it, when you look at how much it costs to stay in rooms in Waikiki and they're $400 and $500 a night. So I, I was going to photograph surfers because we were staying on the North Shore. So I bought that 100 to 500, 150 to 500, whatever. It's, a, it's the Sigma version. And I took it with me. Could not get sharp photos with it. It just wouldn't do it. So I come back that year, promptly bought this monster, sold the one, I think it was a 150 to 500. It was before the 600 millimeter variant happened. This one immediately blew away the Sigma lens. I mean, but now, honestly, if you get a good copy of the two to 500 Nikkor, it's a keeper. And this one actually worked right out of the box. I didn't understand that at the beginning. I didn't know that there was bad apples in the two to 500 space, but come to find out, they made quite a few of them that apparently had focus issues, but mine works. And I went back the next year with that and took stunning photos of surfers doing huge waves, like stuff that was kind of like, I was kind of nervous and I was standing up on a very high hill shooting down into the ocean and I was worried. <laughs> it was incredible. But that was, that was the main reason I got that lens was to photograph those surfers doing pipeline and doing Waimea Bay. But now, Okay, I got two things happening at once. Was it a DSLR or a full frame? It was on my Nikon D810, which is a full frame DSLR. That's what I ran it on then. And still, like when we went to Maggie Valley a few, back in November when me and Aaron went up there and did our fellowship of the Aperture Ring trip, I used my D810 the day we went and photographed the elk. That was what I had on that lens that day. Mike Mitchum says, I had a Tamron 18 to 300 that I used on my Canon 80D. Worked great. It was pretty much the only lens I ever used. I have the 18 to 200 Nikkor DX lens, and I bought it. When I bought my D7000, I bought that lens, and I put that lens, well, the first lens I bought was the 35 f1.8, and I shot that lens for basically a year. I shot everything with just that lens. And then a year later, I got that 18 to 400 because I wanted some telephoto, and it does, it's the do it all. It was 18 to 200, excuse me, 18 to 200. And, you know, on DX, that field of view is like 300, so it, it gave me a lot of magnification. And that lens worked really well. I used that thing for everything. I, and I still have the lens. I sold the camera body, but I kept the lens because it's a great little lens. But then they came out with the 18 to 300, I think was the next Nikkor variant. So when they did, the prices on that one tanked. So it's really, um, I'll take a bath if I sold it now. <laughs> that's why I still have it. But that's, but yeah, that's a great lens. Hassan says, speaking of sharp, what is your opinion of sharp versus character? That's a really good question. So many want sharp lenses at the sacrifice of character. I think I prefer character for a little softness. It de to me, it depends on what I'm photographing because if I want something with a lot of crisp detail in it, like, like little songbirds is a perfect example. 
if you if you're photographing songbirds up close you want to see the lines on the feathers you know you just want that detail and a good sharp lens gives you that because you don't lose the you don't lose the sharpness through you're calling it character i'm calling it distortion in the glass or um resolution resolving power that's the word i'm looking for if the, if the glass can't resolve the detail to the sensor because the sensor can record the detail it's just got the lens has to give it the detail so you know if i'm doing portraits i like the lens to be just a touch soft for portraits just a little it's nice that's why i like vintage glass for portraiture because it's a little softer a lot of times just a little bit you know like honestly this 24 to 70 f4 s lens is clinically sharp it's ridiculous how sharp this lens is to the point that when you're doing portraits of women they don't want every little perfection on their face to show up in the photo and if you use a vintage lens to shoot that portrait they won't see them and they'll be happier with your portraiture pro tip i have figured that out with teresa she can't hear me she's off in the other room <laughs> but it's the truth i mean they don't want you to show the little imperfections in their makeup application or that they their little black brush they make their eyelashes bigger with where they might have bumped their eye right here doing it they they don't want that to show up so if you do it with a vintage lens typically it won't some of them are pretty sharp and you'll still kind of get some of that but if you get like a on on a crop center like you say you had xt3 and you put a 50 millimeter or a 55 millimeter f 1.4 on it and you shot that wide open and you made sure their eye was nice and crisp and you had that pupil nice and sharp when you when you fire the shutter then it pushes everything behind and in front of that out of focus just a little and it smooths out some of those imperfections works really well that's why uh, that's why that uh, 85 f 1.4 is such a sought after lens because you shoot it wide open you get the eyeball sharp and everything else is just a touch soft and it it just makes the picture look more appealing so yeah but yeah if i'm shooting if i'm shooting like songbirds i want the christmas in the feathers yeah thank you i am back up because some stuff's happened while i was rambling bass angler says i if you need the 500 millimeter phase fresnel tested on eagles well i'm your man all right um i about i was about ready to mail it to you anyway because i almost dropped it earlier when this when this stream becomes an uploaded video if you'll if you'll watch through the first probably what 20 30 minutes you see where i nearly dropped it <laughs> phil thatch says i think character has its place and sharp has its place but each has a time and place perfect example perfect explanation phil thank you bass angler wants sharpness because he's shooting daggum eagles feels like me he says i like playing around with vintage prime lenses when he shoots portraits and me too the the vintage glass works really well for that sort of thing i i shot sierra senior portraits with the 58 millimeter f 1.4 or f 1.2 minolta prime on my xt3 hold on just a second this is how you do senior portraits you print them in a book so you don't lose them but this was shot with that vintage 58 millimeter minolta prime and they're shot wide open on the xt3 i just have focus peaking and what i would do is i shot handheld and um, what i would do is i would turn on peaking and I'd set the focus, and then I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'd zoom in on the eye. I'd go ahead and get the composition like I wanted. 
So I'd move the, the zoom box over to the eye, I'd zoom in on the eye, and I'd slowly lean in until that eye turned, until it just basically turned red from the peaking. And then I just press the shutter and freeze the frame. You don't have to come back out of magnification before you take the photo. As long as you've got your magnification box where you want it in the composition, you don't have to see the whole composition. Just click and you get that, you know. Senior portraits. <laughs> but yeah, we like we we went out and did all sorts of stuff. And but yeah, I printed them in a book so I wouldn't lose them. But yeah, dude, you can get beautiful photos with vintage glass. And that was the only lens I took that day. I took the camera with the battery pack and that 58 millimeter Minolta, and that was all I used the whole day. Thank you, Hassan, I appreciate that. I don't consider myself a very good portrait photographer. Let's see. Dwayne McCollum says, hi, David. I had the Nikon 18 to 200 and loved it. After 14 years, it isn't focusing from 18 to 70. Hmm, I repaired this six years ago, so I'm junking it. You wanna buy my old one? I'm not using it. <laughs> Unless I get a Z50, then I could I could rig it up and make it a loner camera for Sierra or something. Hassan's talking to Phil. Good points. I agree. Thank you. Hey, Martin. Thank you for stopping by the live stream. Appreciate you. Martin's been uploading content here lately, and his videos are awesome. I'll just be honest with you. I liked your landscape video, dude. That was sweet, especially with your going out to the Lake District like you did. I really liked that photo, or actually all the photos, but particularly the one where you were showing the reflection, I believe it was, it was closer to the beginning. That was a really beautiful photo, dude. Oh yeah, I do too, don't. He says he's gotta get better at the video side, don't we all? Let's see, I gotta back up and catch. Um, Martin says, just join, always late. Dude, it's some kind of ridiculous hour where you are. I'm just glad you're here at all. <laughs> he says he has a Helios 44 he's going to start using. I'm going to tell you, Phil's been wearing out them Helios 44s. He's trying to like corner the market on them because I think he has three of them right now. <laughs> Martin says, lovely portraits. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, he does. He just said it. He's got Helios 44 days too. I have three, LOL. <laughs> Do you stack them on top of each other? <laughs> does that compound? Does that give you a super telephoto if you do that? Nice <laughs> portraits. Thank you, Hassan. I appreciate it. I did reverse element mod on one. Cool book. I'm using the... Hassan says he is using the Super Talkerman 135 F3.5 for portraits, and it's outstanding. That's a great focal length for portraits. I have the 135 millimeter F2.8 uh, Leica R mount lens, and I used it for a couple, well, I can't show you. Ah, it's in the under. Um, I took a picture of a woodpecker on a bird feeder with it. I set up my Leica CL and had that lens adapted to it and I focused on the bird feeder. And then I connected to the, the CL with my Leica Photos app with my iPhone and I went across, a, it was on the back porch of the B&B &B we were staying in. And I went all the way to the other corner of the porch and I was shooting a video while I was talking to the camera. I was just watching the display on my phone. And, I, and if a bird would land on the bird feeder, I'd just take a picture. Well. I sat there and I sat there and I sat there and I, I had about done concluded that the camera itself, which was about 10 or 15 feet away from the bird feeder, even then, wasn't like it was too close or something. But then all at once, this woodpecker lands on the post beside it. So I get all excited and I get my phone ready. Then he flew over and lit on the feeder and I hit the button and he vaporized, it was gone. So I went back through the camera and I got the picture. Razor sharp, 
You can see all the feather detail in him with that 135 millimeter on that Leica CL with the remote app. I got, I got it. But that was the only bird I got a photo of. And I sat there for a long time. But what had happened was they had scattered so much seed, they were down on the ground picking up the, the scratch. But, but yeah, I got that one photo of, and you'll see it. I'm, I plan on sharing it on my Instagram pretty soon. But that was a really cool way. And it worked good too. Let's see, I'm stuff's going by here. But that's a great focal length, Hassan. Tom Darren Litsky says, I use vintage knock on glass on my Leica. I do too. It gives me sharpness and character. The Konica 40 millimeter is pretty stunning. Dude, I I don't think I have anything like a, I have the 45 millimeter Nikon pancake lens. That's the only one I have in the 40s. And it's it's okay. It takes okay images. It's it's like a tesser lens or something. It's only got two or three elements in it. It's very, very compact. It might be five eighths of an inch thick. It's, it's serious. All right. Bass Angler said, I tried portraits once and quickly retreated to the woods where I belong. <laughs> that was the end of that. Hmm. Sir, Dwayne says, I would buy your 18 to 200 if I didn't have the Tamron 18 to 400. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, that's the one lens to rule them all. That's what Phil says when Heather gets hers out. And I kind of agree. That lens is incredible. Especially if you're doing like landscapes, like she was using it, stopping it down to get stars. It just, it's a, it's a beautiful lens. It's well done. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> Hannah, Phil says, Hannah makes 135 S28, $15 for the win. Dude, talking about bargain right there. Hassan Martin, none so far. I managed to pick up a great one off eBay. I love the colors it makes on the Panasonic S5. That's right, he's a Panasonic guy. Now time to try with that new lens. <laughs> I didn't have it with me last weekend. All I had last weekend was a 20 millimeter F2.8 Nikkor, 50 millimeter F2 Leica, and the 135 F2 2.8 Leica. That was all I took. I took the CL and that and nothing else. Thanks. Martin says, Hassan, thanks. I might pick, might pick one up of them, actually. Adrian was here? Uh -huh. I didn't even know you was here, Adrian. Thank you for coming. Good night. I appreciate you, or unless you're just saying good evening. Buenas noches, if I said that right. I'm glad to see you. Martin says, did you review that Leica you're using? I didn't know about it till I saw you using it. Not yet. I haven't officially, I've done a few little chit chats here and there about the CL, but I haven't done an official review because I wanted to use it a while first. And I've had it a good while and I've used it a lot. So I guess it's about time I sit down and do one on it. I haven't done, I haven't done my one year review on my Z6 either. It's kind of a, it's kind of a hard thing to do. I like them all so well that I want to give them all good marks. And that's, you know, that is kind of, it's fair, but it ain't. <laughs> Bass Angler says, Steve Perry said that the phase Fresnel works great with the 1.4 teleconverters. You ain't trying to weasel me out of that 1.4 X tele again, are you? <laughs> he's all, he's been after that teleconverter for a while. <laughs> Martin says, Hassan says, the black and white it produces are better, are very, very good, better than the colors in his opinion. Interesting. And you gotta know your place. Heather has found her spot. Phil is the waterfall master and Dave is the street photographer. <laughs> it, I just arrived. Buenas noches. Good to see you, Adrian. Thank you for coming. 
could you compare it to the Fuji? Maybe that would give it a reference point. I can give you the summarization now. The CL is less featured than the X-T3, um, significantly less featured, but it's more fun to shoot, if that makes sense. Look, don't run off. I'll be right back. I'm gonna step around the corner here and grab something. Yeah, here we go. Here's the X-T3 with the 56 F1.2. Amazing package, by the way, like set up like that. Here's the CL, currently wearing a 20 millimeter Nikkor. And you got Nikon glass on your Leica camera. <laughs> but it works. It makes, um, this runs like about a 30 mil. So it's kind of a, it gives me basically a 28 millimeter kind of look. But, I mean, if you take the battery grip off, they're about the same. This one, this one actually has a little more base on it because there's about a, uh, maybe a quarter inch, maybe a little less. This little leather cover has got a frame in it, and it adds this little grip thing on the front. So, it makes the camera a little bit bigger. I have to take a coin to pull it off, but yeah, you can kind of see... It's about a quarter inch so that recess that's the bottom of the camera so you can kind of see how much this adds to the bottom but, but as far as the physical cameras go the cl has two multi-function knobs that have buttons in them the shutter release power switch and then it has a has a four-way D-pad with a button in the center and then three functions. Your top one is play to look at your photos. The next one is a function button, allows you to like, if you're looking at pictures, it gives you the delete choice and things like that. And then the bottom is the menu. And then they've updated the menus. Like if I turn this on, if I hit this menu, you get this, which is the, um, I think they classify this as the SL menu, but if you hit it again, it goes to the favorites and then the next one, then it starts toggling through the actual menu pages and there's like five pages of menus and then it resets and does it again. Like exposure compensation is right there. Then you can, you can drag the slider with your finger. Uh, I've changed it to something else, but you know, and then you can go through your favorites. What What's good is, is your favorites comes up before the rest of the menu. I really like that function, but, but I like this camera better than the X-T3. They, this has more megapixels. This is like 26.2, this is only 24. This produces 6,000 by 4,000, or this is, I don't remember, but it's a little over that. It's like 6,300 and change or something like that. But this camera takes phenomenal photos. The X-T3 is an amazing camera. I used it for, what, two years? Loved it, great machine. I took it and done landscape with it. It's a great camera. And I still like it. And it has things that it can do, like I said, like that. When the screen tips up, because it allows you to get down low and still see the composition and then take the photo pointing up, that's a nice function. That's the only camera I have that the, that the screen does that. I'm, I'm not big on flip around screens. I don't use them. I just don't need it. So I'm not a big worrisome on that, but this screen doesn't do any of that. It's it, it's just fixed, so you're, you're, sometimes you have to guess. But I just like this package. You know, it's got a, a battery right here. Yeah, I got several batteries. So that I don't, since I don't run battery grips, but it don't have any like external ports. Um, you you don't have like USB ports or HDMI ports or any of any of these myriad of connections that the XT3 has right here. None of them, like zero. <laughs> it's meant to take still photos. It has video capability, but I I have never used it. But it's not. It's kind of. It's almost an afterthought. 
It really is. It's not really meant for video. It's meant to take photos. It's meant to be a street camera. So, but yeah, I run it. Here's my, there's the 135 F2.8. They call it Elamart, but it's an R mount lens. It's beautiful glass. And I got it, and I got the, this weekend I took the 50, and then just ran them. That was all I took, was the 50, the 135, and the 20, and nothing else. And had a lot of fun. I wound up running that 20 millimeter most of the weekend. Let's see, man, y'all been talking. I gotta read these comments to catch up. So I could do a video about that. It wouldn't be hard to do. Huh. Oh boy, David, you're slacking there. We want more videos. Yeah. <laughs> Just posted my star of Bethlehem photo on Peter Gregg Facebook page. Ah, you done got yours edited. I took pictures. <laughs> oh yeah. It's on this camera. We'll see if it'll let me show you. Back up a few pages. I took a bunch of pictures. There's them. Yeah, yeah. It looks a million. There's breakfast. Ha! Let's see if you can see it. If I can get the camera to adjust brightness. Dang, it ain't gonna let me. Dang, I can't adjust brightness on here. Ah, that's killing me because it's awesome. I don't know if you can see it. Now you, you can kind of tell. Oof, needs an ND filter. <laughs> yeah, man, I got the. I, I don't know what kind of woodpecker it is. Joy, I have to weigh in. Tell me. I'll get the picture out of the camera. I'm excited about that. Let me back up and see what I've missed. Man, y'all been saying stuff. Okay, stuff's happening here. Okay, here we are. As always, you know I want the teleconverter and now the face resin. <laughs> you can make me a great package deal. <laughs> All right, you got me on that one. <laughs> Phil, are we in full Bocephus mode yet? <laughs> Yeah, I like the rangefinder aspect of it too, and the viewfinder is nice in it. It's got a it's got a beautiful electronic viewfinder. Are there any lenses you'd use for really wide angle? Yeah, honestly, I have I have really thought about getting something like a um, that fourteen millimeter. Was it the the Venus Laowa Laowa that's recently come out? They got like a fourteen millimeter f two point eight. I've, and, and it's got real high marks. Everybody that's messed with it has loved it. And I've thought about grabbing one of those. It's manual, it's full manual lens, but so is all these other ones. Yeah, I mean, I like that tilt screen. It, that's one of the main reasons I like that camera. That and the interaction. I mean, when you when you finally get to where you, you understand what's going on with ISO, shutter speed, and exposure compensation, you know, and it's just, it's a photographer's camera. And it does good video too. I ain't shot much video with that one. I did a bunch of slow-mo when I shot, I, I videoed a wedding and made a montage photo collection for a friend of ours that, um, I used it for that, and it worked really well. Phil, does the 11 to 16 have a clutch? Southern California moon is out, but no star. Yeah, the, um, supposedly it wasn't gonna be visible after like an hour or two. I got out early. We were there at sundown, and it's almost comical because me and my nephew were out in the yard 
I went to my sister's yard because she has kind of a high ground yard and so the horizon's a little easier to see. And we started looking where I thought it was supposed to be and I started, we started noticing this little, what, what we thought was the star down low, kind of low on the horizon. So I zoomed in, took a photo and it looked like a meteor. I was like, that ain't right. So then it, it was moving real slow across the sky. So after it moved a little ways, I refocused, took another picture. It was a stupid airplane. <laughs> it was flying almost straight towards us and we couldn't tell it. <laughs> but while I, was, while I was focused in on the Jupiter and, and Saturn, I had a plane fly through the frame. I had a satellite go through the frame and neither one of which I was like videoing. I didn't video either one of them, but I thought that's pretty cool information. Stuff's going by the whole time, you know. Dwayne McCullum asks, do you think the Tokina is as sharp as the Tamron? I don't know. I don't know much about Tokina glass. I know, I know the 100 millimeter macro Tokina is like, is like to die for. Everybody loves that lens. Phil says, if I was in the market for a DX ultra wide right now, I would buy the Nikon 10 to 20. There you go. And then just, if you want to put it on the XD3, you can get an adapter and just, it'd be a manual lens, but it'd work fine. It's a good point. I'm just looking up the, um, in fact, I use it adapted on my XD3. I like the clutch, both if it's rules. I was taught on the Leica M3, wow. That's awesome. That'd be sweet. I wouldn't mind shooting some film in a Leica M3, M4, even an M5 or an M6, you know, but the M3 needs a light meter. So you have to get one of them little tiny light meters that goes in the hot shoe or carry one extra or learn your film well enough, I guess, that you could eyeball it. But you can overexpose what I found out with Tri-X and with HP5, you can overexpose them a fair bit and they still make good photos. But that's a, that's a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Phil says, I don't know why my phone takes the space out of my messages. <laughs> you may have to go in and reset your phone dictionary if you have an iPhone. Just turn off the prediction. Yeah, I done that a long time ago. <laughs> Don John says, I'm in the flight path. I know what you mean. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> But yeah, if I was, I'll pull this off. If I was gonna recommend someone get a Fuji camera, it would be this one. It wouldn't be the X-T4 because this camera, let me just check something out. Um, this one, yeah. I wanna see what film simulations I have now. Pro Negative High, Eterna, Acros, Monochrome, Sepia. Eterna, Pro Negative Standard, Pro Negative High, Classic Chrome, Astia, Velvia, and, and Provia, which is standard, okay. Eterna. I thought I got another film simulation when I did that last update, but I didn't. I don't remember what that film, that last update actually done for me, but I've done it while we was in Maggie Valley. Make sure I ain't missing something. How come part two, I tuned in late? Yeah, my my phone was on like, I don't remember, some kind of dumb low percent. I didn't realize it until I had done juiced up the stream. And when I was powering the stream up, I was in portrait mode and it said rotate phone for landscape. And I happened to notice the battery symbol was red. So I flipped it over and I said, we'll run it till it dies and see how long it lasts. It made it about eight minutes, <laughs> but that's why. That's why I'm doing a second part. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. 
Phil says the latest firmware for the XT3 added compatibility for the 50 millimeter F 1.0. I may not actually have that update. I don't know if that's the one I have. Another text message. Woo. Rookie mistake. <laughs> yeah, I should have took a power pack with me. It didn't even occur to me at the time. I haven't, I haven't been able to charge my phone throughout the day. I was running um, off power operations a good bit, so yeah, I didn't see the what the language was. All right, well. That's the universal symbol for it's time to shut down the stream. Teresa wants to do stuff. It's been a lot of fun, guys. I appreciate y'all putting up with my short-lived stream and then coming back for this one because, you know, I made a mistake. I didn't have enough juice. But it's kind of better this way because at least y'all can see this way. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, here, I'll use this one for the for the sign off. I subscribe to that guy who does live streams from the room with all the Christmas trees so I can hang out with you guys. <laughs> Life is mightier than the stream. <laughs> oh, just send me that Z6. Well, I'm gonna use the XT3 and the 56 F1.2 to say, um, until next time, Get your camera out and go take a picture with it, all right? You say adios because you're learning Spanish. Oh, and adios. And um, is it, is Adrian still in here? So if it is, is it, is it um, hasta luego? Or hasta la mañana? That's see you tomorrow, isn't it? So, um, oh, <laughs> they're talking about the 5150 joke the Van Halen stuff. <laughs> yeah. Martin Castine is from England. He's logged in. He's the guy who did the cover photo for the Chainsmokers album. Really? Mm-hmm. That's neat. Yeah. You guys keep talking. He's going to get in trouble. That's <laughs> <Hassan. laughs> We'll see you guys later. Good night.